Hi, I'm Adam from the Jarable team at Zero Turnaround, and today I want to show you how you can use the NetBeans debugger with Jarable to make code changes to your application without having to rebuild the entire application, leave the debugger, or stop and start the application either. So with uh, Jarable, it's just a JVM plugin, but also an IDE plugin. You can install a Jarable through the plugins directory inside of NetBeans. Typically what you would do is you go to available plugins and search for Jarable. I already have it installed, however, so mine wouldn't show up there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to enable the Jarable button on your toolbar. This is the Zero Turnaround logo, which enables or disables Jarable for new projects. For your existing projects, just please click on them and go to the Jarable panel and ensure that you have a checkbox next to your project. The other things that are important are ensure that you have compile on save enabled for your project as well, because Jarable works with the actual compiled classes. Now that we've verified those things are in place, we can get down to actually using an application and then debugging it. We are using the Working Set 1 application from the NetBeans uh, debugger tutorial plugin. This is a very simple application that's going to ask us to enter some numbers, and then it's going to uh, basically tell us whatever the max of the uh, numbers that we entered is. So if I just run the application without using the debugger, we can verify the application starts and builds, and now it's asking me for a number. You may notice the zero turnaround banner that starts up in your JVM when you have uh, the, Java, the Java agent from Jarable enabled. So here I'm going to enter 4, 6, and 2. And we see that the largest value is being output as 2, which is clearly incorrect. It should have been 6. So now that we've established that there is a bug in this, in this code, what we can do is we can actually debug the application instead of running it. I've added a few breakpoints throughout the application that will be helpful for us. Now, when I hit debug, we see that we're starting up again, and I've actually added two watched variables, max and my array. Max is going to be an a empty integer, you know, initialized to zero, and my array is going to be an uh, array with uh, zeros in the zero, one, and two positions. It'll be a, a, an array of length three, of type int. So, uh, we can now start, you know, debugging our application. We have we have breakpoints. We're going to step into the get values inside of main. So we've stepped into get values. We see that we can verify that max is zero, and that my array has zeros in all three locations. Now, what we have here is a scanner. It's a very typical way of getting input from a, from a command line console. You enter a number. So I'm going to step again. Step. Okay, step again. Now we see that the output says, please enter a number. Okay, so I'm going to type four. Step. Step. Keep going, and then I hit six. Okay, and now we have filled. We can verify that we've actually filled the, um, the array. We can go back to my array now. We have four, six, and two. So that worked correctly. Great. Now let's uh, step out of that. And now we're going to step into find max. Now, in find max, we see that right now max is being initialized to the first number I entered, which is four. We see that my array has four, six, and two. So what we expect to happen is 6 will be identified as the maximum number because it is the, the largest number in the array. So if I step inside of here, we see that we're going to iterate over, this, uh, over the array and set max to whatever the max should be from that array. However, we also see that this is the line that has the bug. And this should be a greater than because we want to set it to the largest number, not the smallest number. And we can verify that this actually is incorrect by stepping Okay, now we see that we are at i of 1, so we should be dealing with the, um, the 6 in the array. And we see that it stayed 4 in max. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change that line of code to greater than max. Now, if you just used the apply code changes uh, method inside of NetBeans, which uses hot swap, you could make this change. But what if you had a much more complicated bug in your application? one that required you to refactor or add new methods. So we can do that as well with Jarable without having to leave the debugger. 
so you can actually maintain context while you're writing your code. One thing we can do is add a new method and a new class. So let's go and add our new class to our, to our demo package here. We're going to add a new class. It's going to be called the printer class. And the printer class is going to have a uh, public static void print. And this print is going to take in a string. And we're just going to output that string using the handy NetBeans macro for printing, x. So I'm going to save this file. I'm going to go back into the main. And I'm going to define a new method down here to show you that we can actually change more than one uh, class at a time. So I'll change this to uh, void as well. And this is just going to be a call printer. And what we're going to do uh, is we're going to call the printer class and we're going to feed it uh, from the printer class the max is and we're going to use the fact that max is statically scoped in this class that we can just call it like this and we're going to then call our call printer here. Now when I hit save because I have compile and saved enabled we see that Jarable picks up the class that got changed and we have our, our reload message right here. Now there's no reload message for the printer class because that's a new class. It wasn't previously on our class loader or in the JVM at all. So it can't be reloaded, it's just being added. Now, uh, the way that Jarable works, we actually require you to, to cross a method boundary or a class boundary or something like that. So because we can't recall the find max when we're already inside of it, we can use one of the more advanced features from the NetBeans debugger. By going here, we can click on stack and pop the topmost call. Now that we've popped that call, we see that we're actually going to go back and hit it fresh. Now we're inside of find max. We see that max is 4, i is 0, and now we can iterate through this again. And now we see that because we're at uh, i of 1, we're inside of the max equals because uh, 6 is greater than 4. And we can verify that position 1 of the array is 6. So let's step again. Now we see that max is 6. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that we can now hit continue and uh, it's going to finish running the application. We see that uh, the largest value is 6, which is our existing message previously, and our new class got called with the new method call and everything. So we were able to successfully, with Jarable, add a new class to our project. We were able to define a new method as well that, that called that class, and then use that inside of our existing application without having to leave the debugger, without having to do a full build of the app, and without having to lose our context or state of mind with what we're doing. I hope this has been helpful for you. Now, in this example, this was a very simple application, but Jarable can actually handle real-world enterprise applications, and we actually have integration written for over 80 frameworks. So if you have a Spring app or a Java EE app, for example, you can make these changes as well and make framework changes without having to worry about uh, having to redeploy your application. Thank you very much. Have a good day.